a crystal lattice energy born haber cycle problem in your future on say an exam it will almost for certain look like this where each of these tells you what kind of reaction it is though you have to write out the reactions add them up and solve for the crystal lattice energy uh, as the one thing just like we did before this is a companion problem now let's hit the last two pages which talk about trends in crystal lattice energy and these are important because these will end up being trends in uh, intermolecular forces as well so there are two trends both of these trends follow something called Coulomb's law And Coulomb's law says that the energy, one version of it anyway, is um, of two charges is equal to one over four pi epsilon naught times Q1, or sorry, times Q2 over R. Where, and so uh, Q1 and Q2 are charges and R is the distance of separation between them. Distance of separation between the charges. Come on, zoom in there, there we go. So, and, so the energy between two charges is related to the product of the charges, or is, let's say this, is proportional to the product of charges. Product meaning multiplying, and these two are multiplied in the numerator, and inversely proportional to the distance of separation. Now, we will not use Coulomb's law directly at all in this class. We'll save that for physics and other classes. What we will, though, is we will use these proportionalities to make statements involving charges and separation that are related to uh, the crystal lattice energies. So, for example, if we now look at delta H crystal lattice energy, for a homologous series of uh, charged, con or let's say this, yeah, if, uh, for a, I don't know if it's a homologous series, uh, but for um, two ionic compounds with ions of similar size, And by ions of similar size, we mean that they will be close uh, to each other on the periodic table, as we've already discussed, sizes of atoms, ions, trends, and those. So if we now look at sodium fluoride versus calcium oxide, where the sodium and calcium ions are similar in size, though differently charged, and the same thing can be said for fluoride and oxide. And if we look at their crystal lattice energies obtained by using Born-Haber cycles in kilojoules per mole, and we also look at their product of charges, well, let's look at their product of charges first for sodium, that's a plus one. For fluoride, it's a minus one. 
plus 1 times minus 1 is minus 1, plus 2 times minus 2 is minus 4. So according to our theory of Coulomb's law, or what I'm proposing as the trends in crystal lattice energy, the crystal lattice energy of calcium oxide should be approximately four times larger and uh, minus 910 for sodium fluoride and minus 3414 for calcium oxide. Not exactly four times larger, but approximately. And negative, meaning that these are both attractive terms and the attraction between calcium and oxide ions is approximately four times the attraction between sodium and fluoride ions. So that's trend number one. We're calling it uh, sub letter sub two here. For the next trend, uh, delta H crystal lattice energy uh, now we have a homologous series. That means just a related series in a row. A homologous series of plus one minus one ions or plus one minus one ionic compounds. What I mean by that is now we're going to have sodium chloride, uh, potassium chloride, and cesium chloride. And we're going to now look at their uh, delta H crystal lattice energies in kilojoules per mole. Um, and we'll also think about the sizes of these atoms and ions. So as you move down the row, the ions get uh, bigger, and that means that the distance of separation between the charge gets bigger. So we'll put these in in a minute. As you move to the right, the cation gets bigger. which means that the distance of separation of charges between the positive and the negative gets bigger. Which means that the um, crystal lattice energy delta HCLE gets smaller. That's what we're proposing. And if we look at these numbers now, uh, we have minus 787 for sodium chloride, minus 701 for potassium chloride, and minus 657 for cesium chloride. So that trend, though not perfect, so it's not a linear trend. Hmm. I don't know, I'd have to see the sizes to be sure, but it doesn't seem like a linear trend. All we're going for is that the crystal lattice energy decreases as, uh, so I guess it's not directly proportional. I don't know, I'd have to think about that. I have to look at sizes, excuse me. Um, but the crystal lattice energy does get smaller as the ions get bigger.